Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon. So today I would like to continue with the uh, teaching of lab under chapter 7, uh, computational paradigm. So without further ado, let's start our lab session here. Okay, so chapter 7 under computational paradigm. So we go towards question number 1. So here we have how do you calculate execution time of a program with pipelining and without pipelining. So basically without pipelining, okay, so the first answer where you have to one instruction is where the total of this time. So this time is under picosecond. So from stage one until stage five, you can just add all of them together you get this 800 picosecond okay per instruction so if you have 10 instruction so you just 800 times 10 which is 8000 and then uh, when you do with pipelining okay you have to split uh, the instruction you cannot just add so here you see that this is how we arrange all those instruction according to the, uh, the sequence of the pipeline so here you can see that you have 10, uh, 200, okay, up until here you have 10, uh, 10 picosecond times 10, and then plus 100, which is the extra one, okay, plus 200, plus 200, plus 100, okay. So with total here, you can get that the total time taken is 2600 picosecond here. Okay, so this one is an easy one. I think this one is a little bit off. Oops. Okay, it's a little bit off. Uh, it is what's supposed to be on the left. Uh, I will make a mistake here. So supposedly this one a little bit to the left. Yes, much better. Okay, so miss that. Okay, you have up until here 200 times 10 and then you have 100, 200, 200 and 100. Okay, so the total is 2,600 picosecond. So this is how you calculate uh, the, the pipelining. So in this case, we just count it as um, 200 as the ma maximum time for one stage. So that's why we did not fit in the unit. You see that on the top here, okay, you have 100 picosecond for one of the stage. So in this case, we ignore the half size. A half time uh, instruction so that uh, makes calculation much easier but in reality there are those who are take shorter time and there are some algorithm that can optimize even those uh, shorter time uh, stages into all those pipelining sequences however in this case to make our job easier okay we just uh, ignore the shorter time and then we just add okay we just add uh, according to to what left okay of this okay next uh, we go towards uh, the next question we build our uh, flip-flop uh, from this according to this uh, chart okay I have my logic sim here okay so how do we construct it okay you can refer to your notes Okay, I'll do this uh, notes uh, on my sides. Okay, so in this case, you can see that you can take the, the memory. Okay, here you have two D flip-flop. Well, first D flip-flop, the second D flip-flop. Okay, so now you see that uh, all these D flip-flop, they need to be attached to an input. Okay, which is the input is X. So in case X is one bit, so you just put one probe here and put it as X. Okay, zero or one. Okay, and then okay, we continue with our gates. We have our not gate here. One first not gate, second not gate. And then we have our end gate here. Oh, it's 
and I want NGET supposedly to be to have only two inputs, two inputs. Okay, and then we just copy this because from the second end gate, this is so we need to input to input. So this one is over here. Okay, well we have one not gate, another not gate here. Attach it down here, and from this queue we attach it. Okay, here and the next side is uh, we have what else okay from this queue we are going to attach directly to here and then we have this one attach it to the output and this one go back here Oops, oh, this one is supposed to be clock. Okay, oh, it's not an input. This one is the one attached to D. And this output here will be attached back to D as well. Okay, so we have the bottom one finished. Okay, and then the top one also finished. Okay, I think this one is a little bit messy. So we put it here. Okay, and okay, this one supposedly connected to oh not this one. This one supposedly connected to here. Okay. This one not supposedly here, it's supposed to connect it to here. Okay. So the top one already attached and we get the output here. The bottom one already attached and this is the first one. Uh, here, attached to the bottom and the top. Okay, finish attaching them and then we just put in the clock. So it's the clock. Clock is this. And we put the clocks here. First clock and you have your second clock. Okay, and the end we have this uh, probe. So we want it to be west. Okay, and then we have the second one is down here. No, no, not this one. Okay, down here. <coughs> this is the second one. We have our second probe here, which is facing west. Okay, you can see that in this case, what happened if we simulate? How do we simulate? We just put ticks. So you can see that the number here is changing. So we're not sure whether this is a zero or one. So let's try to take a look. Okay, you can see that. So the one zero one zero one. So what happened here? You can see I already changed to one. You can see that when it's zero one, because I calculate when it, when it ticks one. Okay, this one is they they move it automatically. So let's just uh, disable it first, reset, and you can click tick once number one so you have uh, when this one is one it's become zero and one something like that so you take again okay top zero and then take again oh sorry you can take once up until 20 times and you will get the answer here okay the answer is either this one uh, this one and this one eh? so this is q0 this is q1 so you can record your answer here Okay, so this is, uh, this one is uh, zero 01, okay, if you can see that, you can put your answer here for all the ticks, 20 ticks, so you think you can do it yourself later on, 
and let's go towards the last question okay so our last question is oops okay our last question is a little bit difficult one using logism construct a calculator that can perform addition and subtraction for four bit system design that the draw the design the space below okay for this task okay i would like you guys to use a sample logism that i will provide in our google classroom later so this is what i have this is what i, what I created before this one is a 4-bit cpu okay 4-bit cpu so you have this one in the instruction address register this is the clock clock running so you can reset everything okay clock running here so this one first instruction second third so this one is basically the program counter okay so and then here is the ram <coughs> so the ram here they consist of 8 bit ram so 8 bit ram means they have 4 bits for opcode and 4 bit for operand so every time the clock takes a memory from the ram will be read okay and there will be okay the this one is you have you want to fetch instruction which is the opcode and then you have this one is the the operand okay so what are they used for so opcode is to determine this one address okay what kind of instruction should you put in okay so and then you have you have a uh, data that you need to load inside the register okay so here you see that we have a lot of register if it attached to register a we we'll go towards load register a okay load register b load register 3 c d okay so in this case okay when you like for example you have here is okay this one oh sorry i think you cannot see it okay so you have the opcode okay you have the opcode and this is the opcode so the opcode is determined here by this uh, binary okay and when you have load register a for example here this put register a okay and then add okay there is a lot of more operation that i did not define here so here is n or add okay so maybe you can create your own substructor later on okay so in this case you see that this one is the alu so the alu here is the one that will conduct you can double click here you can see that this is where the calculation occurred so you have invert a b so when you invert it can be a subtractor okay it can be a subtractor so when you invert okay you can uh, be a subtractor and then the answer will be a subtraction so when you want to go back you can go back here to main so there are several files here so you can go back to main so you can look at okay when n is if n is operated or is operated there will be a code here means that opcode which defines what kind of uh, instruction, what kind of um, uh, instruction that is required for the accumulator to do. So once they completed, the result will be published here. Okay, so we have this 4 bit register to do the calculation here for addition and subtraction basically. So you can refer, this one is a little bit complicated, okay, uh, but this one is more realistic towards our. 4-bit uh, CPU okay so you can refer to this okay I will put it inside uh, inside our our Google classroom you can refer to this and please uh, how can I say because uh, I did mention here in the question 4-bit addition and subtraction system okay please uh, demonstrate a calculation without the clock if possible okay without the clock so this one is with the clock okay in your case i did not want you to do 
with the clock okay i want you guys to utilize the alu okay and this one only without the clock so try to demonstrate without the clock inside your answer okay so i think that's all for this week task i guess uh, good luck so i will wait for your answer so for those who haven't submitted your previous question a uh, previous answer of your lab sheet please do submit them as soon as possible because i need to grade them by this week so that you will get your carry mark later on uh, before next week okay so and then for those who submitted your project thank you very much so you will get your marks uh, within this week by the end of this week your projects uh, and for your lab i will give you the marks okay so in case there are no more uh, in case there are, i think there will be no more no more uh, assessment okay other than your final exam and your final exam is not uh, created by me it's created by the team who handled the degree so i guess uh good luck for your assessment later on and for your mini project in case i am not satisfied with your project and also your assignment i might ask you to resubmit the uh, correct answer later on okay so you can refer to this uh, you can run them in logisim okay i give you the files download logisim and run them inside logisim so that you can see how a real 4-bit instruction work 4-bit cpu work so you have this program counter you have it reads data from ram okay and then how did it operate elu so that you can get better understanding on how the cpu work. it's kind of a little bit messy because i did it uh, just in a quick uh, sense so maybe you can understand them when you run it okay so i see you guys later on during uh, a next video which is a uh, last chapter uh, it's a short one so hopefully you can just stay tuned this week is the last video for your uh, for this course okay thank you very much thank you for your subscription thank you for your likes okay i see you guys later bye